final thing I wanted to talk with you about, and that is um, React Admin as a project being sustainable. So we've been talking about uh, the essentially sustainability on the technical side. Is there anything that makes React Admin sustainable um, from a more business side so that we know React Admin will be around in a few years? You know, Do you have thoughts on that? Oh yeah, very much, very much. Um, <laughs> open source is great. I mean, when you have a popular open source, it's also a curse because uh, the more and more popular a project will become, the, the more and more expensive it will be to maintain. And that's, you will see that everywhere. So Rectanin started as a just simple library that we published and we thought, okay, well, people may use it and report bugs and will and help us uh, solve it. So that could be beneficial. And then it became very popular. And 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 now we spend about uh, one, I mean, there's one person full-time working on triaging uh, bugs, uh, qualifying them, uh, fixing bugs, uh, the documentation, etc., updating the dependencies because there's so many users. How do you pay for that person? And it's just for you know maintenance. When you want to add new stuff, well, uh, how do you pay for that? And that's the the biggest problem of open source in general. I'm passionate about open source, and I have published numerous open source projects, but only once have I found a way to make it sustainable, and that's with React Admin. And it feels like I have found you know, the key to uh, the marvelous world of being paid to do open source, what everybody dreams of. And I'm so happy about it because it's really very hard to find. And we finally found that key. And the key, you would never guess it. It's asking people to pay for it. Uh, no way. Yeah, as does, surprising does as it gets. <laughs> so what we did... So after building uh, React Admin, uh, we added a, a new layer on top of it for enterprise customers, and it's called React Admin Enterprise Edition. So it adds new modules for uh, for enterprise use cases, like uh, I don't know when you want to deal with a, a tree structure, when you want to uh, uh, build a complex nested forms, when you want to have role based access control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are modules that we uh, sell with the subscription uh, to enterprise customers, and and this brings revenue to uh, to our company, and this revenue is enough to pay a team to work on React Admin full time. So it's not that we, my company, is a sponsor of React Admin in in the way that we put money in it, hoping that one time it will come back. It's not that we have uh, uh, had an, an investor put hundreds of millions of dollars into the project, hoping that one day they will have people to, they will have customers paying for that. Good luck with that. Uh, is that we have now, today, a sustainable project. We have enough customers to pay a team to work on the open source and the enterprise version full time. And wow, I'm just, when I think about it, it took us <laughs> so much uh tries and energy to to do that and eventually the solution is to ask people for, to pay for it so simple i mean it's not so simple because we've uh, moved from uh, just developing an open source framework to being an editor and this requires a lot more skills you need to be able to you know do accounting uh, to market uh, the the new features you need to be able to do support to your customers etc uh, etc et so it's it's a whole new job, and an engineer doesn't know these skills usually. Uh, so we need to we we had to hire uh, people to do that. But uh, anyway, it is beneficial. So my point is that this open core business model, uh, having an open source core and then a layer of uh, of of paid modules on top of it, is one of the keys to the sustainability of open source. You probably know this XKCD uh, cartoon where 
uh, you have a, an, a very complex application and it relies on one tiny library maintained by uh, a sole developer somewhere in Nebraska. And and that's that's a problem that we uh, that, that that people don't realize how much it's critical. We need open source um, libraries. We need open source solutions that are sustainable. And I myself, when I choose libraries and, for instance, dependencies of React Admin, I look for the ones that I can pay for. I, I want them to be open source because I know that there's uh, an inherent merit into looking at the code, finding the bug yourself, suggesting um, changes, etc. But I want it to be funded because I want the people not to leave the project because they burn out one day or they have another employer that don't let work on open source or they, gen they just change their mind. If we build business projects on top of open source, the open source must be funded. And unfortunately, the other solutions like sponsoring or VC money or uh, donations, uh, they don't work in my experience. But having enterprise customers pay for your product works. So surprisingly, that's what we did. That's fantastic to hear. Um, as I, you know, told you earlier, I have had, you know, that experience of being that developer that makes the open source library and there's no income. And you get, um, you know, you get this email that's like, hey, there's a new version of whatever. Are you going to update your library to support it? And I think it was like, I remember I had one of these and it was like, okay, yeah, I guess let me look and see what this is going to take. I run the test suite on it and oh, all my UTF-8 tests fail. And it's like, uh, I don't have time in the next two weeks to try to figure out why it's failing, you know, and it, it, you know, cause you're not getting paid for it. So I think that's sort of an, to me, an unfortunate reality. I wish I could just, you know, develop it and not have to worry about that, but that's not the world we live in. Right. And so it's very encouraging to me when I can see something and it's like, yes, they figured out a way to stay around. And it sounds like that's what you've been able to do. Yeah, but you need to reach a critical mass for it to work. Uh, I mean, we couldn't have started with uh, these two editions right from the beginning because I think uh, it wouldn't be popular enough so that people would, would, would actually build uh, applications with it. Uh, these days, there are uh, two, 3,000 new uh, applications using React Admin published every month. So it's really... A very popular. Wow, uh, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, very popular. And so uh, <laughs> if only a tiny fraction of these uh, applications are customers of uh, the, the enterprise version, then it's enough to sustain you know, the open source framework. Um, so yeah, it, 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 we need to reach a critical mass for it to work. And, and also, as I said, we need a lot of skills, special skills that... Uh, software engineers usually don't have so it's not it's not simple it's something you need to learn to do and we still need to to learn to do it better um but um but i i, I think especially in these troubled times where vc money is running out where uh, companies mm. are uh, uh closing or or doing layouts having a, a business line that is working that is sustainable is really critical especially if you're if you're doing open source yeah i i think that makes a lot of sense and especially touching on the sort of serious side effects of the investment or vc economy as it relates to software as well and how it is not always as sustainable <laughs> you see these projects that a lot of people jump on that have VC funding and then it gets shut down and, you know, le leaves you kind of out to dry and nobody wants that either. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we've been confronted to that. Um, there is a popular uh, VC in the, in the U S called a 16 Z. You probably heard about them. Um, they contacted us to say, oh, so tell us what's what's the deal with the React Admin? How are you doing? What's your numbers? What's your projects? 
Um, and we've seen that these 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 VCs have invested in in a lot of uh, developer tools, hundreds of millions, and we see companies that that uh, have I don't know twenty fifty million uh, dollars in in VC money, and we think, okay, these guys are doing open source, so what will will it become? And we've seen that, you know, yeah. At one time, these the, the investors they want their money back, so the company has to earn some money so they cut features they make stuff paid and that's when you start using another tool uh, usually ad admin for for us yeah. so when when these people came to us and they say okay what what w would you do if you had a lot of money and and what are your plans we said we have no plans we are, we already have rich sustainability <laughs> achievement unlocked and and you know yeah. it's we don't want debt we want profitability. And if we take debt from you, profitability will be in three, five, ten years. How much with the, the actual crisis? We already have profitability. Sorry, we won't take your money. In, in a different type of profitability. They're probably not looking for the profitability you might have now. They might be looking for you know, hundreds of millions a year in profitability, which I'm sure you'd love to get to. But if that's your only no. option, oh no, I, I would I would not love to have hundreds of millions because you know <laughs> I want my health, I want my 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 family life, and if you if you work on having hundreds of millions, you have to make some choices I'm not willing to make. <laughs> 